This is Lewis Art for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and Forged Irish Stout. Delighted to be joined with the big man, John Ryder. We're back in another, another massive fight on the 27th of January. Um, other than that, how was things, mate? We must be buzzing. Mate, things are good, yeah. Um, like I was saying before, <laughs> these uh, these fights get talk, spoke about, the whispers, and the, it's the worst secret in boxing when they when they're spoke about. And then it takes so long to finally get over the line. But we're here now. We've got the date confirmed. Jan 27th, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, at the, the Phoenix Sun Stadium. So, the it's, it's, I can't wait, mate. It's, um, yeah, a huge fight for me, especially after the Canelo fight. Back in at a level I've been operating at, and yeah, the start has been to go on. Definitely. We'll get into all that in a minute. But one thing I did want to say, you said there, it's like the worst kept secret. Everyone knew for a while that, you know, with Demon Gear, we were like, when is it going to be? When is it going to be? Does it feel good to sort of finally have the post up, finally have it announced? You know, there's no more hiccups. Yeah, massively. Yeah, I mean, it's um, obviously it's always difficult with uh, down. I know it's on the same platform as the zone, but obviously cross promoters talking, and then you the time difference with London and the, the state. So uh, that always plays into it. So I think it's a day a day behind as such. But I'm buzzing now. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a fight I want, a uh, fight I like, and a, a fight that I really get up for. And um, I said after the Canelo defeat that I wonder keep going at this level and not, not drop back down and I didn't want to have a, a six or eight rounder somewhere. I wanted to come back in at the level I've been operating at and uh, I think this fight shows it. Absolutely, definitely. We'll get into that in a minute. But one thing I did want to say, this fight is in January and I think it's the first time you've boxed in January since 2016, which would mean a, a camp over Christmas. Uh, how do you sort of deal with that? How do you find that, uh, having a camp over Christmas? Do you know what? I'm in camp or over Christmas more than I'm not. Um, it always seems that we get that January and February dates, yeah. and just one of those things. I'm um, I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, I'm sure I'll get out to the states early and get some some sun on my back. So um, while you're all here in the cold in January, I'll be yeah. out there, not living it up, but um, yeah, in the heat. Definitely. Well, we'll, we'll talk about what you mentioned there um, after the Canelo fight. You're now back in another massive fight straight away at a similar level to what you've been operating at. Is that a good thing? Were you sort of surprised that you were back in you know, sort of a world level mix, a world level mix after the Canelo fight so soon as well? No, not really. I think I gave a, a great account myself. I think I um, pushed it all the way. Obviously, got a lot of got a lot of credit for for continuing. Obviously, with the, the broken nose so early on, and listen, I showed my heart, my desire. So, I mean, there, there was obviously other options to to drop down and be on an undercard somewhere and have a six or eight rounder, but. I'm at a point in my career now where I think the, the, the days are numbered and um, I'm not here for a long time, I'm here for a good time. So I'm just I'm making the most of it day by day now. Is that an important thing for you now? Like in your career now, I just want the, the biggest fights possible because as you said, you know, the days are slightly numbered. You know, you've had sort of almost over 40 pro fights now. Um, so to to sort of be for yourself that, you know, I want I, want, I still want to be operating at this top world level um, until, you know, you might not be able to anymore. Yeah, of course. I mean, listen, I'm 35 now. I don't feel like an old 35. I feel, I feel fresh. I feel injury-free. I feel good. But listen, it's always, you're always going to have these doubt with the naysayers that he's old, he's, he's old now, he's 35. But listen, it's, um, it's, I think it's person by person. I'm a good liver outside the ring. Um, I'm not out boozing every weekend. I'm sensible. So and I'm very much a family man. So I'm always wrapped around them. I'm, I'm always being being well-behaved. So that's that's stood me well in my career and give me the longevity to, to go on this long. So, I mean, like I say, fight by fight now. Um, I'm, I'm here to enjoy these fights now. And, uh, that's why I want to stay at this level and keep operating here. Uh, is it good to show your toughness and, and in the Canelo fight? And you talked about your stock rising. Was it good to show them? Because there was, there was multiple times where, you know, you probably had the option that you couldn't continue, um, but you didn't choose that, you know, you chose to fight on no matter what injuries you're going in. And as as a result of this, you then gained so much more respect, even though, you know, com coming up short. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's that's a positive from it, but obviously I can't be having too many yeah. more of them fights. They're, um, they're damaging fights and you can't be, be having too many. So, um, listen, I, I plan on keeping it a lot simpler with Mungia, uh, boxing more and, and being more sensible. Yeah. But listen, for me to go in there and have the option to quit, it's, it's not in me. Um I've got to think about life beyond my fighting career and potential training career, training fighters. And how can I go in there training them, expecting 110% out of them, knowing that I, I jacked when it got tough and me trying to talk to people, talk to fighters and say, like, 
drill something into someone, they'll be like, oh, you rolled over, you let them tickle your belly, do you know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah. it's uh, obviously that's that's a way off, yeah, I've still got my career to think about, yeah. but that, that does play on your mind. Definitely. What's it like going back to uh, across the pond in a way, fighting, fighting in America, in Phoenix? I think Stan would probably say it's quite heavy Mexican territory, so how does that sort of feel going over, being the away, going over to enemy lines once again? Well, listen, it won't be as heavy Mexican as uh, Guadalajara, yeah. that's for sure. But um, Yeah, definitely. Listen, I, I got a great reception off the Mexican fans last time. They're, they're great fight fans. And um, it's, I, I, I welcome it. I like I like fighting abroad. I feel like fighting abroad brings the best out of me. Um, I like getting there with no stresses of being at home. I'm Like I said, I'm a family man. And if I'm, if I'm here, I want to be with my kids and my partner. And it's, it's tough. It's tough. We get we get to the states. It's time to dial in and just focus on the fight and, and what's important. Do you enjoy being a road warrior in a sense? Like there's fighting Canelo in Mexico. Um, even 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 examples like fighting in Parker on a Queensbury show, fighting Mangir on you know uh, on a Golden Boy show. These examples of being road warriors. Um, do you sort of enjoy it, enjoy what you're saying there with the, with the less pressure in a sense? I did. I've never really thought of it to be honest. I just see. I always see a fight as a fight, regardless of yeah. who I'm fighting. I mean, I've I've fought on matchroom shows, but kind of been the away fighter with Rocky Fielding, uh, Callum Smith, Jamie Cox. So it's nothing new to me being in the away corner. So I just I just welcome these fights and listen. You, you get in there, a fight's a fight, a ring's a ring, and it doesn't matter if it's in London or Phoenix. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll talk about Jaime Munguia as a fighter. Um, people know his qualities. People know your qualities. Are you excited to be in a guy who sort of people are touting as you know that he's one of the top level, top level middleweight, super middleweights, just like yourself. And you know it's going to be a real, real style, a real, real style of, of two of the best. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's obviously got that undefeated record, forty-two and zero. Um, and listen, I'd love to be the first person to put a blemish on it. So, um, so he's, he's a good fighter. He's not put a foot wrong yet. Um, Obviously, had good fights. I think probably the standout fight for me would be Liam Smith beating him. Although I think it came at a time where Liam was potentially a bit disillusioned with the sport. Obviously, he left Joe Gallagher after that, and uh, after he, he fought Canelo previous to that, then fought Mungir again. Um, so I just I don't know where he was at the time because we've seen Liam Smith come back since then and, and be an absolute different animal. So and, and be it also done that was a, a light middleweight. Jaime Munguia is now at super middleweight, so be interested to see what he's got. Definitely. A, a big criticism that Munguia, you, we mentioned Liam Smith there, but a big criticism Munguia has always got is that, you know, his record is is quite padded and other than Liam Smith, he hasn't really got a, a big win is, is a lot of the criticism that people have. Do you feel like you're the hardest fight he's had today? Um, Potentially, yeah, but I mean, the, the way I'm going to treat it is that he's going to be the hardest fight I've had to date. Mm. Um, Regardless of who I've been in there with before, um, Jaime and Gear still in front of me, and I've, I've got to take care of him. January twenty seventh. Do you feel like do you feel like he's in for in for a shot when he when he does fight you that you know you'll be able to prove that you are the, the toughest test that he's had? Yeah, I mean that's the aim. I mean I've, uh, I've I've been in this game a long time now, and I've been in against undefeated fighters, and it's one of those things. But I'm looking to go in there, make a statement, and come away victorious. Absolutely, and and enough. Obviously, with a win over Mangia, that you, it was a fight, fight that you called for for the start of twenty twenty four. You wanted Mangia with a win there. How much do you intend to push on for twenty twenty four? That you know, and getting a win over Mangia, you can be in massive, massive fights. Yeah, I mean, well, listen, potentially twenty twenty four could be my busiest year in by far. Um, try and beat Mangia, James twenty seventh, and then uh, could have a nice summertime fight and. All, all all goes well there. Then you can fight again in the winter. So I could get three fights in tension next year. So it's um that's that's a positive. I've not had three fights in a year for a long, long time. So uh, that's the aim. When you when you look at the super middleweight division as well, uh, guys like, who are making a real turn at the moment, guys like David Benavides. I know you speak, you spoke about Caleb Plant, uh, Jamel Charlo. It exciting to sort of be involved in the mucks then with them guys very soon. Yeah, definitely. It's great to be in and around that mix now. Um, Fighters coming up, fighters coming down from weight. So um, it's, it's, it's a good time to be a super middleweight fighter. Um, obviously, that's kind of where it has with, with Canelo having the titles. It's, it's kind of making all the other fighters fight each other. So I think it's a good thing for, for boxing and the, the best are fighting the best. How how long do you think Canelo will sort of stay holding the belts for at 168? Do you feel like maybe he might end up vacating and, 
it might end up becoming fragmented, which you know could push yourself into another world title position. Yeah, potentially. It's hard to know. I mean, um, I don't think people are really forcing mandatories on him. He's just fighting kind of who he wants when he wants. So um, I think as long as he he wants to keep fighting, defending the titles, and he, he'll keep them. Yeah. Someone, obviously, another super middle I mentioned earlier, David Benavidez, he's been knocking on the door for a Canelo fight. Um, you sort of sharing the ring with Canelo. How do you see that fight going? And what do you really make of the fight? Oh, I think it's a fight. It'd be a tough fight for Canelo, but he's very he's very evasive. Um, he, he's very tactical. He knows what he wants to throw, when he wants to throw it. And listen, Benavidez is, is, is massive at the weight, huge at the weight. Um, I think he takes something out of himself to make that weight. I don't think he's punch power potentially there. And, I think the the skill of Canelo could really negate Benavidez, and he, I could only see a Canelo win. Yeah, absolutely. Just just the last one from me. Um, someone I'm sure you're in camp with is Conor Ben. He's looking at you know, pushing for a potential February fight of Chris Eubank Jr. Um, the thing I wanted to ask you is, firstly, you know, I'm sure you want to see the fight happen. Do you think it happens, and how do you think it goes if it happens? Yeah, I mean, as a, as a fight fan, I'd love to see it. Um, I don't know how close it is or whatnot, but at least, yeah, as a fight fan, I'd love to see it. And after Eubanks' year last year, obviously losing and then winning again, it was um, it was a, a, a turbulent time. But um, I mean, yeah, I, I back Connor to the hills, and he's young, he's fresh, he's explosive, and he's looking to go out there and make a statement. So just as we close this off, John, what happens on January twenty seventh against Jaime Munguia? Listen, I um, I go in there, I'll take that O. Um, come back to London, a uh, Mexican slayer. And I look to build on that win and uh, have a busy 2024. See you, top man, John. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. All the best catching up and uh, yes. have a good time yes. in America and all the best, mate. Thank, Thank you, mate. Oh, shit, man. Cheers, man.